T-Mobile decided to turn off the uh, computer, the recording, so I'm not sure where, how far back it goes, and how much information has been cut off since I started talking. I'm not sure if they're working with MacArthur or with your government. It's one of the two that's controlling T-Mobile and telling them to turn it off or cut it off. Most likely it's you, rather than the church. But in any case, the Lord wanted me to read Malachi 3. On my way to the storage this morning, and uh, after I spent a lengthy amount of time explaining um, to the community around why raping was a sin, you know, we go back to scripture, and the Word of God tells you in three different places, twice in Genesis, both the raping of Dina was a sin, the raping of, of the sexual assault against Joseph was a sin, and then again, Tamar was a sin. And uh, to think that by now, at three o'clock in the afternoon, all of that information is already out of them. Whatever they endured for the last six, seven hours, what I have preached earlier this morning is no longer in their head. You know, the Lord sends us out to preach the gospel and uh, the seed of salvation has already been removed. So Satan has already moved into the territory of their heart and put in, you know, put the sin back in, put the immorality back in, put the evil back in, put the disobedience back in, put the unbelief back into their hearts, okay? So Malachi 3, and one of the things, before I get here, one of the things that the man I, I was walking by, a man was sitting at a restaurant, and he made mention of money. And my response was, to the money that he made mention of, I had put in an application for a job, Portland re uh, rejected it, I had put in an application for housing, Portland rejected it, and I had put in an application for seminary, which was half completed, Portland rejected it. So I don't just want money that's handed, but I want a job so I can take care of myself. I want a home so I'm not sleeping in the streets, in, in tents, and then putting signs up for ministry. I'd like to work on a real property where the word of God is being preached, where the people of God are meeting like any other minister. So thank you for the money offered, but I'd rather have my life back if you are an honest government who is willing to give us back our lives. I mean, only you can open that door. I can't open it myself. So we're going to go into Malachi here. Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 18 says this, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Verse 3, And he will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah... And Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against those who swear falsely and against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages, the widow and the orphan and those who turn aside the alien and do not fear me says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. 
if I will not open for you the window of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it may not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been arrogant against me, says the Lord, yet you say, what have we spoken against thee? You have said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his charge, and that we have walked in mourning before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the arrogant blessed. Not only are the doers of wickedness built up, but they also test God and escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. And they will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Blessed be the reading of the word. This was written by Malachi, not to the church, but to Israel. This was an issue that God had with Israel. If I were to go through each verse of scripture here and explain to you, and remember Malachi, Malachi is an Old Testament uh, minor prophet, and Malachi here is talking to the people of Israel, the 12 tribes. It says here, I wanna read this for you, it says, it is uncertain whether this is a proper name or a title of honor given to an, to an anonymous prophet. The prophecy of Malachi was spoken probably in the second half of the 5th century BC. The first part, chapter 1 verses 1 uh, through chapter 2 verse 9 is addressed to the priesthood, blaming them for their neglect of the service of God. The second part, chapter 2 verses 10 uh, to chapter 4 verses 6 is addressed to the people condemning heathen marriages and also uh, the, pre the prevalent spirit of discontent. The faithful are encouraged by the assurance that the Lord's coming is near. He will send his messenger, Elijah, to prepare the way. Chapter 3, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. And then quoting Matthew 11, 10, Mark 1, 2, Luke 1, 17, and Luke 7, 27. They must prepare to receive him at his coming. Christ was also a messenger sent by the Father. And was he received? No, he was not received. There is a, a, a passage here that I want to read. And uh, it says here, Then I will draw near to you for judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer, against the adulterers, and against those who swear falsely, and against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages, the widow, the orphan, and those who turn aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. If that is true of Israel, how much more is that true of foreigners that are here in the United States? If that is true of Israel, how true is that of you in this country in dealing with foreigners in the United States? He says, I will draw near to you for judgment. God will draw near to Israel and the priesthood for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. So at that time, there were sorcerers among the Jews and against the adulterers. There were adulterers among the Jews. If somebody saw what Gabriel was doing in my tent last night or any other time, and if it wasn't Gabriel, but it was a woman who was already married, they would call that woman an adulterer. They would call me a fornicator, okay? And so, it says here, I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer, a swift witness against the adulterer, a, 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 a witness against those who swear falsely. If you are one in the police department, if you are one in the government or in the, among the people who swear falsely to God, you say that you believe, but then by your actions you deny him, then he is against you. It says, and against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages. What is it, a wage earner? A worker, a person who's trying to make ends meet, a person who puts in an application and somebody from the community comes in through the back door and say, would you not give him the 1850 that is due? 
Would you give him $14.50 instead? Can we take $4 out of that amount and give it to her so that she can do that for him? He's a foreigner, he doesn't know that, and we don't really want him involved in doing all of that for the women of the community. So would you mind, you know, garnishing his wage, giving it to Gabriel so she could do that for him? And speaking of which, is my social security being garnished? Because what is, what is she doing doing all of that if she's not being paid by you, the government? Or is she so faithful in doing that to me that you give her an extra 200, maybe pulling it out of my social security disability, right? That uh, 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 the, the illness account, I'm not sure, I don't know. But the scripture says here though, the wage earner, right? The wage earner in his wages, those who oppress, those who don't allow foreigners to go and get jobs to take care of themselves. Those who don't allow foreigners to earn their own income, stand in their own feet, or stand on their own two feet. God is against the sorcerer. God is against the adulterer. God is against those who oppress the wage earner. Does this sound familiar to you as a government, as a police department, as a clan? Do you, are, are, you, are you a sorcerer who practice black magic, who call on the name of Satan? Are you adulterers helping this woman in her adultery against me and my testimony? Are you keeping me from earning wages? Think about it for a minute, right? The wage earner, the widow and the orphan. The widow is the person that loses a spouse. I'm not one who has ever had a spouse. The orphan, I've been away from my family since the age of seven under this woman who has become an offender, a sex offender. So I've been through the uh, child service, you know, the, the child services as an orphan. And even then in the house where I was orphaned, this woman was molesting me in front of the staff. Cardinal McCluskey's group home for boys in Annuette, New York. God is against that. God is against the sorcerer. God is against the adulterer. God is, uh, is against those who, who swear falsely. God is against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages. God is against those who take advantage of widows. The Bible says in the New Testament, who goes in when they know that there's a widow there and takes sexual advantage of her. God is against those who oppress and abuse the orphan and those who turn aside the alien, right? You know that a foreigner is coming and automatically you reject him or her from being able to be blessed with a blessing that they can use to feed themselves, get on their feet and get on with their lives get off of the streets, right? And he says, and God is against those who do not fear him, right? Says the Lord of hosts. Do you fear the Lord? Do you fear God? In Romans chapter three, the scripture says that they do not fear God, right? One of the issues Paul addressed is, is this. He calls these people out in this generation. He says their throat is an open grave, um, with their tongues they keep deceiving the poison of apps is under their tongue, under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their path. The path of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. As a U.S. government, with all your nuclear powers, do you have any fear for the living God? Do you have any fear for the Son of God? Do you have any fear for the power of God? Do you have any fear of what God will do to your soul after you leave the earth? That fear should draw you to your knees. God sees everything. God saw the police department and the fact that they have given me police CAD numbers but have never written a report. What sort of a police department gives people CAD numbers and never have a report written? All of the time I'm, I'm screaming, I'm being raped, stop raping me. Stop molesting me, stop abusing me, stop taking advantage of me. You're laughing, mocking, ridiculing, and you're not producing reports to give to the district attorney so they can do a proper investigation. In the eyes of God, how many times have that woman's mouth been on my genital? In this building here, in the front, on the side, on the north side, on the south side, inside, on the west side. How many times have you seen it and yet, as an alien, you've oppressed, you've rejected, and now you won't even take an honest report to put an end to that sort of behavior against me. You have no fear of God, Portland government. 
You have no fear of God, people of Portland. You have no fear of God, Portland police. You think your gun is where the power is at. Feel your heartbeat. Feel your pulse. Is that given to you by the power of the gun? Is that given to you by paycheck? No, only by the power of God. Only by the power of God. Fear the power of God. You may not fear the messages, but fear the power of God that can stop your heart from beating, your pulse, your breathing, your oxygen taking in, your digestive system. Fear the living God. So he says, the alien, and there are those who do not fear him. He says, for I, the Lord, do not change, Therefore, you sons of Jacob are consumed. One last thing. Church, will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. If Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 7, right? If I was a European born from Britain and I had one of these accents and instead of talking to you, as if I was an African, but I spoke to you this way instead, or if I was a Frenchman, right, from Canada, like John Fonville, right, and I parlez-vous français everything. What would be your response to the preaching, John? Would it be a Malachi situation of you robbing them of tithes and offering, robbing the man of God of tithes and offering, robbing the man of God of support from the church? No. No, 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 not at all. You wouldn't have robbed. You would have provided. You would have opened the door of the storehouse and you would have given for 25 years your support. That is a bigotry. That is a racism against the alien who believes and who has faith in God. That is a sin in the eyes of the Almighty. Stop sinning. Remember what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 7. Those who preach the gospel should get their living from the gospel. I can't do that robbing banks. You as a church need to step out and say, hey, brother, nice to meet you. Let me give you the right hand of fellowship. It's not always going to be the left hand of fellowship, right? How about the right hand instead of the left hand? Huh? How about the right hand of fellowship instead of the left hand of fellowship? Haven't we done the left hand for 25 years, John, and only the right hand for maybe seven? I mean, seven hand of the right hand and, and 24 years of, 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 of the left hand of fellowship is not enough. So he, he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Remember, God is talking to Israel. But God also has a second group that he's dealing with, and that is the New Testament church. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Okay? What God says here to them, he also says here to you. Knowing the sorcerer, knowing the adulterer, knowing the one who swears falsely that he's a believer, knowing those who oppress the wage earner and his wages, knowing those who molest widows, knowing those who oppress orphans, knowing those who turn aside the alien, and yet, and no on those who do not fear him. And no on those who do not provide and care for his ministers. If you've rejected me, right, before man, I will reject you before my father. If you want to give your life to Jesus today and, and set your account straight with God, say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Father, I repent of my unbelief. Lord, thank you for this good, solid job that's helping me take care of my family and my children. Lord, thank you for this good country full of milk and honey. Lord, thank you for this lifetime that you've given me. I don't know how many more years that I have left, but for the years that I have left, I want to give it to you in devotion. I want to work to provide for myself and my family, but I also want to know the God who has given me life and who is now offering me eternity through the blood of his son, Jesus. Lord, forgive me for my sin. I repent. Bless me with your Holy Spirit of promise. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. The Bible says you shall be saved. Not Kevin, 
not John MacArthur, not Billy Graham, not the Jews, but the living God says you shall be saved. Okay, so these are the words of God to you, old man. You in the police department, you in the government, you in the construction working, you in the streets of Portland and the sheriff, if you believe in the blood of Christ and that God raised him from the dead and you pray that prayer of salvation and repentance, you shall be saved. Father, I thank you for this hour. I thank you for this few minutes to talk to these people. I pray that they would make the correction and remove Gabriel out of this terrible situation as government officials, not as people of that community, but as government officials, that they will go back to their ORS, constitutional and biblical laws, and will put this situation here that I'm in within its context and make that correction. I pray that these things would be done today. In Jesus' name, amen.